Welcome to the SQL Server Fast Execution Plan video training, presented by Hugo Cornelis. In the advanced level of Block 1, we will continue to present generic knowledge about execution plans. A lot of the content in this level is about properties. Properties are not directly visible in the execution plan, and yet they are perhaps the most important element of such a plan. We already touched on the relevance of properties in the basic level, and we also presented the most important properties. Here, in the advanced level, we have two full chapters devoted to properties. The first chapter discusses properties that don't belong to a specific operator, but to the plan as a whole. And in the second chapter we'll describe all of the properties that are common to many or even all operators. We'll also look at how you can follow columns around in an execution plan to see where a column is produced, what operators pass it on, and where it is used and for what reason. All demos in the second chapter use the same query, a query with performance issues that we will try to improve by using the things we have just learned. The third chapter talks about what I consider an invisible property, the order of the rows in the data streams between operators. Some operators impose a specific order on the rows they produce. Some operators return their results in the same order as they receive them, while others can mess up the order and effectively return data in random order. And yet other operators require their input to be ordered in a specific way. When the optimizer creates an execution plan, it keeps track of the order by using its knowledge of which operators impose a certain order and which operators preserve that order to determine whether or not it needs to resort the data before feeding it to an operator that expects its input to be ordered. In chapter 4, we talk about missing nodes. This is not as dramatic as it sounds. I use the term missing node to refer to a situation where After plan selection, the final cleanup phase found a way to remove a node from the execution plan. This is a good thing because this improves performance. But sadly, the optimizer does not always correct all properties to reflect the effect of removing this node, and that can result in very confusing artifacts in the execution plan. You will see a few examples with an explanation of why the data is misleading at first sight and how you should interpret it once you realize that the data is misleading because of a missing node. The final chapter discusses batch mode execution. This is a special execution model introduced in SQL Server 2012 and significantly improved in later versions that is optimized for processing large amounts of data in minimal time. You will learn how details of microprocessor architecture are used to maximize throughput. And the chapter of course also gives an overview of improvements to batch processing in each next version of SQL Server. This is of course just a short overview of what you can expect in the advanced level of Block 1 of the SQL Server Fast Execution Plan video training. The full content is over 2 hours and 40 minutes long packed with useful information about execution plans. I hope this preview has piqued your interest.